Akash Devgarkar. I stay in Mumbai and I also work in Mumbai. Uh, I uh, work at Tata's uh, Cancer Research Institute. Now it is named as ACTREC. It is situated in uh, Kargar, New Mumbai. Uh, and I'm working on brain tumors over there. If, uh, if I want to place it simply, it is like uh, uh, we all have, we are made up of cells, right? Uh, and the basic part, uh, the most important machinery about the cell, of the cell is the nucleus. The nucleus has DNA, as we all know. Uh, the school students know this. The thing is, uh, then if the, the, the DNA has the message uh, written on it, if the message is same in every cell, why do cells differ? Our eye cell is, differ fr is different from our skin cell. If the message is same, why are they so different? So this is the question that uh, we are addressing. So we are studying something called as epigenetics. So this is like, you know, even if you have the same message, why the results are different? So this is a new or emerging field in, uh, in, in the biology field that is called epigenetics or epigenetics. So what's about genetics? What's genetics is what is already written in the message. And what's epigenetic is how it is being read. Uh, so we are studying a gene which is called as arid one b Now the, this gene is a part of a complex of uh, several proteins. So this gene basically encodes a protein. Now this protein goes and binds to several other proteins. Now this whole group is involved in shifting or involved in the process in which the way DNA is read in the cell. So basically, it, it will go and bind to the DNA and it will open up or loosen it up. If it opens up the DNA, that DNA will be read and that the message will be read in the cell. If it doesn't or it closes the DNA, then the genes will remain suppressed and they won't be expressed. Okay, so if, that's, if it uh, opens up the DNA in the, reti in the eye cells, only those genes will be expressed which will make the cell an eye cell. Okay, so as far as my work is concerned, uh, we have loss of this gene in, in a set of brain tumors. The brain tumor is called as medulloblastoma that I'm working on and uh, almost in every patient, one copy of this gene is lost. As we all know, we have two copies, one which comes from mother and the other one which comes from father, right? So one of the copy is lost inherently and we don't know if this is required for those normal cells to become cancerous cells or tumor cells. So what we do in our labs is uh, we have taken a set of cells, we grow them in, uh, in a controlled environment which we call as tissue culture, all right? Uh, and then uh, I've just knocked out, knocked out in this, uh, I've deleted this gene uh, from these cells and then we are checking how this, how these cells work in the absence of this gene, okay? And then uh, so what we do then is once we have knocked out or deleted this gene, we see at which all RNAs or which all genes become active and which all genes become inactive. If they, if these genes are becoming active, then we check if these genes are required for the formation of tumors. And if these, some of these genes become inactive, then we check are these genes uh, required for suppression of tumor formation absence of these genes would lead to formation of tumors. So I'm in the halfway, we have found a set of genes basically that, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, which are required basically for the formation of tumors and a set of genes which are required to suppress the tumors. Okay, so, so it's like, it's kind of amazing thing that a set of, a single gene can do so many things. Basically, we, the whole genome has about 20,000 genes and a single gene being responsible for the formation of uh, a tumor or brain tumor basically so uh, in my case the study as of now has reached to this stage wherein we have actually understood or rather we are trying to understand the function of these other genes which this main gene that is called arid one b is controlling being a scientist it's it's interesting uh, the first thing which drives us towards doing it is the interest and it's rewarding basically we tend to repeat the things which we do uh, and if they are rewarding. So this has been rewarding for me the number of times I've done. So I do it repeatedly. So that's the most interesting part about this.